In this video we're going to be looking at a couple of different kinds of microscopes and the microscopes we're going to be talking about are the light microscope, the scanning electron microscope and the transmission electron microscope. So let's have a little look at our learning objectives for today. First of all we're going to understand how the three microscopes work, then we're going to hopefully be able to recognize images from each microscope and then we're going to suggest the advantages and limitations for each of those three microscopes. Let's get started. Firstly, I'd like to define this thing called resolving power or resolution. And this is the ability of a microscope to differentiate between two really, really close together objects or points mm -hmm. of light. If a microscope has higher resolution, that means mm -hmm. that it can tell apart objects that are closer together. So it says here that higher resolution means that objects that are closer together can be seen as separate points. And here's an image to give, give a little visual uh, example of that. So on the top we have high resolution where we can clearly see two distinct objects. And below we have low resolution where those two objects kind of merge together into a big blurry mess. So let's look at our first microscope, the light microscope. This is the way it works. We've got an eye, and light is sent up from the bottom uh, through a condenser lens, through a specimen, through an objective lens, and through an eyepiece lens, and into your eye. So light is focused using glass lenses, and it relies on light being able to pass through the specimen. So that specimen's got to be really, really thin and transparent. And the regions that absorb more light appear darker in the image. And to calculate the magnification of a light microscope, we can look at the little number on the eyepiece lens, which pretty much most of the time is 10 times, and then multiply that by the objective lens magnification. So most light microscopes have a, a swivel arrangement of three objective lenses to allow you to get a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer to your sample. So let's have a look at some images from a light microscope. So the advantages of the light microscope, they're pretty easy to use. Chances are you've used one yourself. They're really cheap to purchase. We're talking less than a thousand pounds for a half decent one. They show true color, which means what you see is what you get as far as um, the coloration of what you're seeing. Sometimes we require staining though to make, uh, make the samples easier to see. And the good thing about light microscopes is, especially if we're using a dissection microscope, we could use live specimens, but we wouldn't be able to see inside cells. So you can use a live specimen um, to look at the, the structure of a, an object in more detail. However, the light microscope comes with a few limitations. They have really low resolution because of the long, lazy wavelength of light. We can only resolve apart objects that are two micrometers apart. They have low magnification, a maximum of 1,250 times. Now this is huge for light microscopes. 1,250 times is massive, and most school microscopes or college microscopes uh, will only be about 400 times max mag. Now specimens are really thin that we've got to put on these slides, so because of that thinness, they may not be representative of what the actual cell looks like in its entirety. Let's start on electron microscopes now. Now instead of light, we use electrons. Electrons are brilliant because they've got a much shorter wavelength which allows us to resolve things that are much, much closer together. So it gives us a much higher resolution. Now we don't actually look directly at the specimens themselves though. Um, you don't look through an eyepiece on an electron microscope. Instead a computer is attached to the electron microscope and it's going to form an image based on how many electrons or the density of the electrons that are absorbed by different areas of the specimen. And then that computer can make the image for us to look at. So the first microscope, the first electron microscope, is going to be the scanning electron microscope, or the SEM. And here's how it works. We've got an electron gun at the top, we've got an anode to focus the beam of electrons, then we have several focusing magnets, scanning coils and electron detectors, which generate an image. And then at the bottom we have the stage, which reflects the electrons back from our sample. So here we go, this is how it works. 
it directs a beam of electrons at a specimen and it creates an image based on the electrons that are reflected so those that are bounced back off the surface of the sample and the focusing is taken care of with these electromagnets and this is what one looks like in real life which is kind of cool here's some images from a scanning electron micrograph and you will notice they have a really three-dimensional quality to them a couple of bugs and some pollen notice they're black and white we'll get to that in a second So, I said the last ones were black and white. Let's have a look at some ones that have been false coloured. So, because electrons don't correspond to wavelengths of light and colours, we have to add colour uh, digitally based on how many electrons are absorbed. So, here we have a, a delightful image that has been false coloured. So, the advantages of the scanning electron microscope. It has a much higher resolution than a light microscope. In fact, it can resolve together, resolve apart sorry, objects that are one nanometer close to each other. That is incredibly, incredibly close. They provide really detailed images of the surface structures, as we saw in our previous slide. And they've got fantastically high magnification of about 200,000 times. It produces this wonderful three-dimensional image However, there are some limitations. It's proper expensive. You need a lot of training to operate one of these devices. Samples must be dead because the electrons have to pass through a vacuum. And the stains that we use usually contain heavy metals, which are usually somewhat toxic. And it produces a black and white image or a false color image, which means we cannot get a true representation of what well, what the true colour of these uh, these specimens are, we have to kind of guess. The third and final type of microscope, and the second and final type of electron microscope we're going to look at, is the transmission electron microscope, or TEM. And here's the diagram that goes with it. So again, we've got an electron beam being focused with a magnetic lens. This time, our electrons are going to pass through the specimen and onto an imaging plate, which is read by a computer. So again, a beam of electrons are going to be directed at a specimen, and it's going to create an image based on the electrons that are absorbed, not the electrons that are reflected back, like the scanning electron micrograph. And again, focusing is taken care of using electromagnets. So here's some images. Oh, sorry, my bad. This is what a transmission electron microscope looks like. Please ignore in the title at the top where it says SEM, that should read TEM. My utmost apologies for that. We all make mistakes, but this is a transmission electron microscope. Let's look at some images. There's some mitochondria, some virus bits and bobs, and what looks like the Golgi apparatus. And once again, we can use false colouring to add a little bit of more excitement to our transmission electron microscope images. And there we have a lovely mitochondria. So let's have a look at the advantages of the TEM. It's got a much higher resolution than the light microscope, just like before, one nanometer. It provides detailed images of the interior structures of cell organelles. And it's got massively high magnification, almost, well, pretty much twice or over twice that of the scanning electron micrograph or microscope. And that's about 500,000 times. But what are the limitations? Well, it's proper expensive again. You need loads of training and samples must be dead for the same reason. Stains are using heavy metals, which will kill cells. And it takes place in a vacuum. And again black and white images or false coloration images. So here's some further reading. A nice fact sheet on microscopy. And a really great website showing 15 beautiful microscopic images from inside the human body. To summarise, electron microscopes have greater resolution because electron microscopes use electrons. 
which have a shorter wavelength than light. SEM, that's scanning electron microscopes, produce a 3D looking image. TEM, that's transmission electron microscopes, produce detailed images of the inside of cells. And light microscopes are cheaper and more user friendly. Light is focused by glass lenses, whereas electrons are focused by electromagnets. That's it. Thank you very much. A like, comment and subscribe.